Federal prosecutors will not file civil rights charges against two Louisiana police officers in connection with the shooting death of a Baton Rouge man, saying there's not enough evidence. The state will now investigate. The incident happened last July. Part of it caught on video. Two white officers shot Alton Sterling, a black man, after pinning him to the ground. They claim he was reaching for a gun. An attorney for the Sterling family says the Justice Department's decision is disappointing, and he also says this. We learned some new things today. We learned that Officer Salamone walked up to Alton Sterling and put a gun to his head and said, I'll kill you, bitch. You heard me correctly. We heard from them that Officer Salamone kept instigating this situation. You heard me correctly. Authorities citing the ongoing investigation would not comment any further on the case. Joining me now is Edmund Jordan, attorney for uh, Alton Sterling's aunt. Uh, the aunt Sandra was supposed to join us tonight, but there's a terrible storm down there. We almost didn't get the shot up. Uh, she wasn't able to make it out, so I'm glad that you can join us, uh, Mr. Jordan. Thank you so much. Um, it was a tough day for the family. How are they doing? You know what? Uh, they're doing better right now. Right after the announcement, Don, they, uh, they were very emotional, uh, obviously, and uh, understandably. But um, as the day has gone on, they have, they have gotten better. So I, I spoke to Sandra uh, right before we, we came on. And, uh, and she's doing much better at this time. We'll give her our regards, and we can certainly understand. I know how the weather is there, uh, and it can be pretty terrible. Uh, this is my hometown. Prosecutors explained to the family in a private meeting today why they did not bring charges against those two officers. What did they say, and are you satisfied at least with their reasoning? Well, look, I understand the reasoning behind it. Um, to say that I'm satisfied, not exactly, but um, what they said was, uh, even though Salamone uh, took his gun and, and put to Alton's head and said that he would kill him, uh, they said that they had to look at the moments uh, right, uh, split seconds right before the shooting. And based on those actions, um, not that it was justified, but that it did not reach the level of a civil rights violation. But, uh, but I think they were very clear in saying that the Attorney General uh, should review this and that there might be enough information to pursue state criminal charges. Uh, I want to say that the, the prosecutor, the U.S. Attorney, said that Salamone's actions were reckless and uh, if that's the case, we certainly have enough to pursue state criminal charges. Mr. Jordan, the family learned about a new videotape of Officer Salamone threatening Alton. Uh, tell us about it. Well, there's, a, there's the videotape that, um, well, there are several other videotapes, but, but one that they mentioned, uh, and I'm assuming it's from the store, uh, it, it comes directly as the officers arrive on the scene. And I want to say there might be some dash cam video as well, but as they approach him, and uh, so that's when you can see, at least according to their statements, him put the gun up to Alton's head, and you can hear, uh, the statement that you just prayed previously that, that Chris Stewart said. Um, so I won't repeat those comments, but, but you know, he said that. And also you can see some of the actions from when Alton were, uh, was shot in the back. So the three shots that you hear on camera, but you can't see, uh, the new video is supposed to show that to, the, to everyone as well. Prosecutors said that they couldn't charge the officers under the federal civil rights law but did they tell you how they felt about the way police handled this incident? Uh, they did. They were, um, to use their language, they were disturbed, uh, thought it violated police protocols. Uh, I think even one prosecutor may have used the term outrageous. But uh, although they said all that, still said that it didn't rise to the level of a civil rights violation. But, but I tell you, um, they certainly uh, at least gave the impression that uh, this was something that needed to be pursued further by the state attorney general. Edmund Jordan, thank you so much. And again, our regards to the family. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it, Don. When we come back, our legal experts weigh in. Did the Justice Department get it right, or should those officers face federal charges? 
And we just heard from the attorney for Alton Sterling's aunt speaking out in the wake of the Justice Department's decision not to prosecute the police officers who shot and killed him. Joining me now, CNN legal analyst Paige Pate, CNN legal contributor Reva Martin, CNN legal analyst Mark O'Mara, and retired police officer Jeff Reuter, author of The War on Police. Hello, all of you. Good evening. I'm sure you heard from the attorney. Um, Mark, what do you make of the prosecutor's decision? Did they get it right? Well, unfortunately for uh, Alton's family, the prism through which federal prosecutors look at these type cases is whether or not they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the cop's presumption as to what was happening um, was not appropriate. Basically, that they violated Alton's civil rights because their perceptions viewed in the light most favorable to the officers perceiving at the time um, were not reasonable. And that means that the cops in the moment's notice are given a lot of leeway. Mm -hmm. my, my greater fear is that this is one step down the path that Attorney General Sessions has edicted with a letter he gave out to U.S. attorneys to basically go hands off on these type of law enforcement activities that happen at the state level, and that's very concerning. Paige, you disagree with the decision. Why is that? Well, I think a creative prosecutor, an aggressive prosecutor, could have looked at this case and decided there was certainly enough probable cause to take it to a jury. Uh, I know the acting U.S. attorney there in Baton Rouge, Corey Admonson. He's a very good prosecutor, always well prepared. I am certain that if he took this case, he would have given it a good go. And there's always the possibility that a jury could have seen this differently. And in a case not involving officers, defendants never get this type of protection, like Mark was talking about. Defendants aren't put in a situation where they're not going to be charged unless the government can disprove their story beyond a reasonable doubt. It's an incredibly difficult standard. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I do think the Justice Department had the opportunity to take this case a step forward, let a grand jury listen to it, and if they indicted it, then take it to trial. Pay civil rights violations require uh, proving intent. So what do prosecutors have to prove specifically in this case, and why didn't they have enough? Well, Don, they have to show that there was an intentional violation of Alton Sterling's constitutional rights. And in this case, it's a Fourth Amendment violation. The police are there, they have a firearm, and they shot him. And what the government would have to show is that when the officer shot him, he knew that what he was doing was wrong, and it was an intentional violation of the constitutional rights of Mr. Sterling. It wasn't a mistake, wasn't an accident. He had to know, willfully commit this act that was a constitutional violation. That's a difficult standard, but that's what this law says, and that's why Mark was saying it's so difficult, and I agree with that. Ariva, we learned from uh, one of the lawyers today that prosecutors, um, they have a video uh, they didn't know about at first. Listen to this. We learned some new things today. We learned that Officer Salamone walked up to Alton Sterling and put a gun to his head and said, I'll kill you, bitch. You heard me correctly. We heard from them that Officer Salamone kept instigating this situation. You heard me correctly. Does that prove anything about intent, Salamone's intent? I, I, think, I think it makes it more difficult to accept what the Justice Department ultimately decided. When you hear that type of evidence, when you hear uh, federal prosecutors saying that they have videotape of these officers escalating a situation and threatening Alton Sterling, even though we know at this time he did not have a gun out. There's no evidence in this case to suggest that Alton Sterling ever pulled a gun out of his pocket. But yet you have an officer taunting him and then for the prosecutors to conclude that they couldn't prove uh, intent. And although it's a high standard, I agree with Paige. I think the prosecutors took the easy way out in this case. And I query, I question whether under uh, Loretta Lynch or Eric Holder if the decision would have been different. And I'm very concerned about Jeff mm -hmm. Sessions and his uh, statements about backing off and not undermining what he calls the morale of police departments. A and putting that, uh, I, I think, jeopardizing the civil rights of individuals, particularly African-American men who are three times more likely to be killed by officers than white men. Uh, Jeff, we saw in, in the videotape that he was uh, on the ground, he was subdued, but they say he was going for, uh, for a gun. That's what they said. What do you think? 
I don't think anyone could look at that video and think he was subdued, Don. Uh, first of all, the only way this case was ever going to trial is if somebody decided to engage in a political prosecution. You watch those first two videos we've seen, and I'm not going to comment on the other videos that supposedly exist that I haven't seen, but I mean, it's clear that, that Mr. Sterling is not under control. The officers uh, try to use less than lethal force. They try to tase him twice. Then they, they sort of bum rush him and, 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 and tackle him to the ground to try to get him under control. And the whole time he's got a, a gun in his pocket trying to get to it. The officers are giving him orders, tr pleading for him to, to stop resisting, to, to stop reaching for the gun. And uh, then that, you hear that last panic cry from the, the officer that's closest to his waist saying he's going for the gun. And that's when uh, the other officer uses lethal force. So you think they made the right decision? I do. I do. And I don't think that these officers will be prosecuted uh, for murder or manslaughter on the state level. Either. There's just no evidence that, that, uh, that they're guilty of those crimes. Mark, why is that so bothersome to you? I see that you have that pain look on your face. Well, well, it's bothersome for a couple of reasons. One, first of all, the standard for a manslaughter or a second degree murder charge is much less than whether or not these officers violated civil rights intentionally. And let me tell you something. I think Mr. Border would, would agree. When you walk up to a situation and say, I will kill you and use an expletive, that evidences what you're thinking in your mind. That is a second degree possibility when you have ill will or hatred or dislike going into the situation. An officer is supposed to be professional and it's supposed to de-escalate a situation. You walk up to somebody, put a gun in their head and say, I'm going to kill you. And what type of reaction do you think you're going to get? I ask this, what type of reaction are you asking to get when you're the one escalating. Yeah. Shouldn't have done it, inappropriate and non-professional police behavior. Put himself in a situation where then maybe he had to shoot because of a situation he put in motion. Stick with me everyone, when we come back, this woman was arrested for laughing out loud during Attorney General Jeff Sessions' confirmation hearing. Is that excessive? We'll discuss.